It is a universe in which there is a coherence between what we can un understand in the here and now on Earth and what we can understand in the rest of the universe. A universe in which there is no real limit to our ability to understand more new phenomena. And a universe in which we can apply what we learn in the universe in present day technology. The basic difference between plasma and all other forms of matter, that is solid liquids and gases, is that a plasma produces electromagnetic radiation and also tends to filament. So that we would expect in, in a simulation, which is what we see, in an experiment, which is what we see, we would expect to see throughout the cosmos a filamentary structure that is a spaghetti of currents intertwining the cosmos. We can use plasma theory derived from experiments in the laboratory, from the basic concepts of plasma instabilities, from Maxwell's equations, and from the law, well-known laws of gravitation to describe and predict how the structure of the universe came into being and what that structure is. So the key question is, how could this structure come into existence? Now, in the Big Bang Theory, the universe starts out in extremely homogenous, very smooth. This is, was in direct contradiction to the plasma universe that insisted that the universe overall must be filamentary. But what we have today is extremely clumpy matter. When I talk about these huge voids, the structure of voids, the matter inside the, the voids is less than 10%, perhaps less than a few percent as dense as the average. And the matter in the walls of these voids, where these filaments of superclusters of galaxies are located, is 10 or 20 times the average. So you have extreme clumpiness. Now, what's the problem for the Big Bang to explain this? There's a huge problem. There is not enough time since the Big Bang to form these structures. These structures are older, much older, and the time hypothesizes the Big Bang. Now, again, uh, in interpreting the observational information, uh, we can again go to the uh, laboratory, which we are privileged to, uh, to diagnose in any number of ways, in any number of directions, and run any number of experiments, which you can't do with the universe. Uh, but we also turn to the uh, supercomputer uh, simulations. Now, what a simulation does is that it allows you to model the plasma, regardless of size, put in the uh, rather few uh, basic uh, initial equations, and then and then follow the simulation through its various nonlinear stages uh, and the different morphologies or, or shapes that the uh, plasma will take. In uh, Tony Peratt's simulations, as the current spirals into the center of the galaxy, turns around and moves out along the axis of the galaxy. In that central area where the current is extremely concentrated, there seemed again the potential for violent events. And Alfane and, and uh, Peratt raised the question, couldn't this be a way of explaining the extremely violent events that occur in the center of galaxies that are known as quasars, in which huge amounts of energy are released in what, by astronomical terms, is a relatively small amount of time. That is, millions of years compared with the billions of years galaxies exist. Initially, the time frames shown uh, represent a billion years or so, but now we're gonna, going to carry it out for 10 billion years to see what happens to these uh, double radio galaxies or quasars as the uh, two filaments have evolved into. 
and you'll see that the tails start to elongate and uh, fairly soon you're going to start to see a, a spiral structure. And uh, as we get closer to 10 billion years, the end of the uh, movie, uh, you will see that we have formed the uh, shape, the morphology, the shape of a spiral galaxy. Now, Alfain developed a number of concepts that were critical to the, to the whole uh, understanding of the plasma universe. First of all was the basic concept of scale invariance in plasmas. That means there are certain phenomena in plasmas that don't change regardless of whether you're dealing with a laboratory scale of centimeters or a solar system scale of millions of kilometers or a galactic scale of hundreds of thousands of light years. What that meant was that time scales the same way as distance does. So not only does this mean that the, that the phenomena of the, uh, of the uh, cosmos can be studied in the laboratory, but because of time compression, phenomena of the cosmos are essentially transient phenomena. This is, it's funny to think of a galaxy lasting billions of years as a transient phenomena, but it's, it's, it's analogous to events in the laboratory that last only millions of se seconds. Another way of putting it, the plasma universe is extremely dynamic. 